Okay, good evening. We're learning tonight Maseches Erevin, Daf Lamed. We are starting on the bottom of Daf Chavtes Amid Beis, five lines from the bottom at the two dots. And we are continuing in our dialogue, in our conversation about Shiurim as it relates to Eru. We're going to get into some nuanced conversations and conflicts among the Tanoim and Amoraim over the course of the next uh, blot or so. And we'll finish about 12 lines from the bottom um, at the first set of two dots toward the bottom of the page. Uh, about 12 lines from the bottom. Okay, opens the Gemara, Chav Tesman Beis, five lines from the bottom, Amar Yehudah Mershmuel. Kol shehu liftan, ktei lechol bo. If you have a food that is a condiment, then the way we assess that is based on how much food you eat with that condiment. However, kol she'enu liftan, if you have something that's not, uh, that's used as a condiment, then ktei lechol heimenu. It would be the difference between dipping peppers into a salad dressing versus eating a salad. It'd be like a good way to conceptualize the difference. You may eat much more salad, it's on your plate in large serving, then you would just dipping, uh, you know, the the red pepper into the actual dip. The shiurim are different. Basar chai, four lines from the bottom of Testament Beis. What about raw meat? Kedei le'echol heimenu. That's treated like its own shear, uh, not something that's dipped into a condiment, but rather its own thing. That's a normal, I mean, it's basar chai. You have to figure out if that's even edible in the first place. Uh, but that's uh, that's how it's measured. Basar tzili, what about roasted meat? So here, it seems that they had different practices about what they did with roasted meat. Now, if you ask most people nowadays, oh, I, I have meat from the grill. Like that's mamish, the, the entree, that's the main dish. But that wasn't clearly the case everywhere. Rabba amar, kadei le'echol bo. Rabbi Yosef amar, kadei le'echol heimenu. Kadei le'echol bo means I'm gonna dip it into something, right? That's where we're still using a condiment. It's a smaller shear, presumably. Um, it's, um, I guess you'd, you'd probably look at it as one of those things you'd get at a restaurant as, a, as an appetizer, and they put it on a skewer and they put some dressing on top. It's not the main dish, it's being treated differently. However, according to Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef, he was more of the carnivore. Rav Yosef, Amark, De Lechol, Heimenu, we look at how much a person would eat in the main dish of the roasted food, and he brings a proof. Says the Gemara, Amar of Rav Yosef, Mino Amina, what's my Mar Mako? The reason how I know, says Rav Yosef, <clears throat> that we Jews measure for an Eruv, when it comes to roasted meat, the shear of what you'd eat as a main dish and not if it was being eaten as, with a condiment, is from uh, another people. Says the Gemara, Dahani Parsai, the Persians, Achle Tav below Nahama. Tav Rashi, Dibur Hamaschil, Tav where did that go? That is four lines from the bottom. Chatichos, that just means pieces. But actually, if you look all the way up in the Mesorah Sashas and Os Katan Tes, he says it's Basar Tzli. Tavake is Basar Tzli. So it's pieces, says Rashi, of Basar Tzli. It's strips of roasted meat. So that's how we know what we're talking about. And they were eaten below Nahama. They were not eaten as part of the main dish with bread. They were otherwise eaten with, uh, with condiments. And therefore, uh, sorry, they ate it below Nahama. It was eaten as a main dish, even without the bread. It was eaten as the main dish. And that's how... How Rav Yosef knew to treat the basar tzli as kadei le'echol heimenu, that its measurement was as if it was the only food, um, and that would be uh, appropriate. So Amr le'abaye, Abaye says back to Rav Yosef, um, and he says, Uparsoi havu ruba dalma, why are you learning from the Persians? There are a hundred ways to eat roasted meat, and I'm not saying that you're wrong, I'm just saying, why are you learning from them? Why, why do they get to determine what's going on? They're not the majority of the world, but that's not. Um, we have uh, we have a Mishnah. It's actually the Hatanya, I believe, is a Gersa change. It's a Brisa. We learned earlier in some of the Mephorshim that a Mishnah is more powerful than a Brisa. So I just want to make sure that I've got this correct. Yes, the Hatanya, it's a Brisa. What is the Brisa, right? In regards to uh, susceptibility of Tuma, of a Beged, we learned about this in Masecha Shabbos, Big De Anim Le Anim. The three finger breaths, the smaller shears for the poor people, being the ashirim la ashirim. And for wealthy people, it is for the larger. It's, uh, it's three tefach by three tefach, points out Rashi. Shlosha, shlosha. But turning to the top of Lamed Amr Aleph, as the Brisa comes to a close, what we see is, Aval big de ashirim la anim lo. We don't switch up the garment size of Tuma for an usher to a poor person. Why not? Why not? If it worked for the poor guy, it should work for the rich guy and vice versa. You wanted to learn from the Persians. Why, why doesn't it work for everybody? So it says, Gemara, I, you're not allowed to do that. You can't just learn randomly from everyone. And if you'd want to argue that maybe maybe both of the cases that we just learned about in the Gemara were cases of Chumrah, 
Rashi helps us to know what parts of Churma we're talking about. Three lines from the top of the page, end of the line. You gave the, the poor person a very small shear. That's a Churma. Even the smallest garment can become Tameh. And, um, and you might have treated it as a lifton. You might have treated it as a condiment, and that would have been a Churma as well. So it says the Gemara, Tanya, that's not true. Rab Shimon ben Elazar Omer, Ma'ar ben Lecholo, Lezaken Kedem Zono, that if there is a person who is sick or an older person, you give them the food that they need. And what about a Ravtan? The Ravtan, for someone who's a glutton, they eat a lot of food. What does he say? The Sa'ud of Bainanis shall call out, and we treat him differently. So why did you treat him Lechumra? Why are you treating Kadam Bainanis? You should treat him Lechumra. We, we see that we don't treat everyone Lechumra. So if you wanted to argue that maybe all the Shitas that we saw previously were Chumras, and therefore everything is Lechumra, it's not always Lechumra, because we see that it's a, like, a Bainanis here, says Gemara Kashya. That's a great point. That's a great point. So a little bit unclear here in regards to the shear of Rav Yosef, in regards to saying that the shear of um, the shear of Rav Yosef is kedei le'echol heimenu. Okay, continues the Gemara. Umi Amar of Shimon ben Elazar hachi. We just saw the brisa two lines from the top of the page. Rav Shimon ben Elazar says that you can be ma'ari for a chola or a zaki in their shear, and for the glutton he gets a shear benenis. So says the Gemara. Rav Shimon ben Elazar holds that way. Ve'atanya, we have another brisa. Rav Shimon ben Elazar Omer. Oh, melech habashan pischo kimelo. That uh, the in regards to tumas meis, that if there is a door that that opens, so the, that door is going to be the the door that's tummy. What is this talking about? This is referencing the fact that let's say you have a uh, many doors to a house, and God forbid a person dies in that house. So the halacha is that if you know exactly which door that the family plans on using to remove the mace, that door becomes tummy. All the other openings are tahor because we know where the mace is going to go. But if you don't know, or if all the doors are equally used, front, back, side, doesn't make a difference, so then uh, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that any of them are tahor, and they're not. They're all treated as tummy. We don't know. So Ogma al-Chabasham was a big guy, and the door that he would come into is the door that he was treated with. And what the Gemara is bothered by is that why here do we see that he's treated with that big door? Why don't we make it a regular size door, like a Bainan is, like we just said previously. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar in the previous bride has said, we treat the glutton, we treat the ravton like someone who gets the average meal, yet when it comes to Og Melech HaBashan who dies in a house, we give him the biggest door. Why? All the doors should become tummy. We should treat it like every other person who's only six feet tall and not 60 feet tall. It says the Gemara, there's uh, some gears of difficulties here as well. You follow along in the, in the Mar Mekomos here. Amar Abaye, um, Hasam, over there by Og Melech HaBashan, Hechi Levad. What were you supposed to do? Hadume nehadme venafke. Were you going to chop them up into pieces and you're going to take them out piecewise? That's not reasonable. Namely, the second Bryce of Roshim ben Elazar wasn't giving us a halachic lens to look through. It was a practical lens to look through. If the guy can't fit through the other doors, those other doors are tahor. And we don't, it's almost like the, the Bryce is a practical point more than it is a halachic point, which raises questions in the Rishonim like, are you an architect? Why are you telling us where the body can fit out? It's very strange. Oh, okay, so a good shiloh to be looked up and discussed. So that's how <clears throat> um, Abaye deflects this question by saying that you're comparing apples and oranges. And the comparison of apples and oranges is that you thought that you could compare the glutton, where we gave a sheer bainanis, to a person who cannot fit out of the door. And he says those two things are not comparable. Another question. Do the rabbis argue against the sheet of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar? Yes or no? Let's see. Tashma. We see that there was another shita, another shita that was much more limiting. That even though there was a much smaller opening, one that he could not fit through, as long as it was pischo be'arba. So clearly, there's a machlokas. Says the Gemara, no. That's not true. You can't say that these that the Rabbanon are arguing with Rav Shimon ben Elazar because here it says four, and earlier the, the Rav Shimon ben Elazar said pischo kimelo'o. Why is there no machlokas here? Because hasam ikah psachim ptanim tuba the ikachad to have arba. In regards to this case of Rabbi Bar Barchan in the name of Rav Yochanan, the case we're dealing with is where we have many many small openings and only one that's bas arba, only one that's the shear of four. So there, it's it's just simply the largest of them. When they carve out, when they widen a door, they're going to widen the largest door, right? They're not going to fit him out of the fourth vachim. That's tiny. Most people can't fit out of the fourth vachim. A little tiny kid. But here, if you're going to widen an opening, are you going to take one that's one tefach wide and start carving? Or are you going to take one that's four? You'll take the largest one you got. So says the Gemara, you can't learn from here that there's a machlokas between the Rabbana and Reb Shem and Reb Shem and Ben Elazar uh, because uh, I could easily get out of the argument.
Okay, going back to Adin, we learn, um, though uh, repeated from another angle. Amar of Chia Bar Rav Ashi, Amar Rav Me'arvin Bebasar Chai. You are allowed to uh, be Ma'arev with raw meat. Amar of Simi Bar Chia Me'arvin Bebasim Chayos. You're also allowed to be Ma'arev with raw eggs, no problem at all. Bekama, what's the shear for raw eggs? Amar of Nachman Bar Yitzchak Sinai. This is his name. Amar of Nachman Yitzchak, excuse me. Sinai Amar Stein. Who is Sinai? Take a look at Rashi. Uh, inner margin, of course, down about an inch. Dibraham Askel Sinai, Kari Rav Yosef. That was how he was called. Rav Yosef earned the nickname of Sinai. Why? Lefi Shahaya Baki b'Mishnayis b'Brisos. Hashkafically speaking, this is a critical Gemara. When we talk about Har Sinai, that includes the Brisos and the Mishnayos. The Torah Shabal Peh came along, at least in some portion, big discussion in the Rishonim here as to what actually took place at Har Sinai, but there was certainly a lot of Torah Shabal Peh that took place at Har Sinai. So when he earns this compliment, this nickname of Sinai, it's also evident, at least this is the remez that's being given, that the Mishnayis and the Brisos were there. One of my favorite examples of this is that if we didn't have clarity from day one on what tefillin looked like, we'd all have different color tefillin. Yet we all know that they're black, that they're a cubicle, that they're made out of leather, and there are four parchments in one and one. We have a whole Masorah, we have a whole tradition. How do you tie the knot? So some machlokas by the knot, right? Do you have a square? Do you have a yud? Some machlokas by, uh, by the arms? Okay, uh, discussions, right? Discussions. But the point is that there was absolutely Torah Shabal Peh at Har Sinai because there's no way to learn. The lens with which we look at the Torah is through a lens of rabbinic Judaism. There's, a, there's no other way to look at it. So that we needed the Bryce says in the Mishnah. Anyways, that's what Sinai said. Two raw eggs is considered a shear. This is pretty prevalent, actually, when people make an Erev Tav Shilin is to use an egg. Um, I believe that this is actually quoted in Shulchan Aruch. Uh, yeah, it's quoted in Shulchan Aruch and Shin Pei Vav, Sif Zayin. Okay, let's continue with the two dots. We're about a little bit more than a third of the way down on Daf Lamed Amad Aleph. Let's continue. Um, we learned uh, earlier, Hanoder min hamazon mutzer b'mayim u'v'melach, that a person who makes a commitment to not eat mazon, they are allowed to eat water and salt. Remember, we also discussed water and salt mixed together versus water and salt separated. We discussed that earlier. So makes the Gemara a quick and appropriate diuk. Melach u'mayim hu delo ikri mazon, hakol mili ikri mazon. What's implied from here is that when it says that you are noder min hamazon, person said, I'm, I'm taking a, a restriction on myself for muzzle. So you can eat only two things, salt and water. What's left over? Everything else. Everything else must be muzzle because you're restricted, obviously. It says the Gemara, but if that's true, maybe this doesn't agree to the sheet of Rav and Shmuel. What do Rav and Shmuel hold? Says the Gemara, the Rav Shmuel, we only say, uh, on five things. So the diuk from this Mishnah and the statement of Rav and Shmuel are incongruous. They don't work together, uh, are incongruent. They don't work at all. Because on the one hand, everything other than salt and water is considered mazon. And on the other hand, Rav and Shmuel said that we only make mazonos on five things, barley, rye, oat, wheat, spelt. The way to remember that, by the way, is it's browse, barley, rye, oat, wheat, spelt. So that's a, a, just a cute little acronym to remember all of the five types of flour that leaven. Of course, the one exception to the rule is rice. Uh, rice, we do, Ashkenazim, we do make a mizonos on them, but the bracha achrona is born in the and not al hamichya, because it kind of is leaven, but it's not really, but you can't be yote any dinim of su'uda, quote unquote, with rice bread, that's not up. Potato flour is a zero in regards to halach, it's not mizonos, it's not hamotzi, it's shahakal. So um, a, a lot to discuss here, but the point is that we see a discrepancy between the diuk of our Mishnah and the sheet of Rav and Shmuel. So the Gemara says, maybe this rejects them. And not only that, we also ask this question once in Masech Shabbos. So maybe, so this is a double question. We, we're not going to go into the details now, but this was a Gemara that we learned in Masech, that, that, that we didn't learn, excuse me, it's a Gemara, Masech Psachim, where the Gemara also asked against uh, this sheet of Rav and Shmuel. So it says the Gemara, Amar Rav Huna, no, 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 you misunderstood the Mishnah. Amar Rav Huna, be'omer kol hazan alai. When does our Mishnah say, hano der min hamazon, it's mutter b'mayim u b'melach? So there's something missing in our Mishnah, a very small, subtle piece of language that we're going to analyze tonight a little bit. But when someone says, I'm making a restriction on the food over there, so then it's less limiting. But if someone says I'm making a restriction a lie on myself, that's much more strict because now I have an Isra Hana on myself. It's not about the inherent food that I said, I'm not eating that food, that's category one. But a higher level, a more difficult level to navigate is saying, hooray, a lie. 
So that's what the Gemara means is that when, when our Mishnah says, Hanodr min hamazon, it was talking about a case where a person said, Kol hazon alai. And there we have a more expansive understanding of what zon means as it relates to the nether that you made. It's more expansive, even iser hana on foods that satiate, not just foods that are mizonos, says the Gemara. And if that's true, maimu melachu de lozaini, there you're saying that the salt and water, they, they provide no sustenance. It's, maybe it's not a mizonos, well, that we understand. But sustenance, you, let's say you eat, uh, eat a piece of fruit, there's some sugars in there, you get some carbohydrates, there's some other stuff going on, a relatively healthy food. It's not mizonos. So you're saying that hakol nili zani, everything else does have some sort of sustenance. Hold on one second. When we would follow Rabbi Yochanan to go learn Torah, uh, we would bring him fruits of Ginos, are very sweet fruit. When there were a hundred Talmidim, every, every Talmud would carry 10 pieces of fruit, totaling a thousand, hundred students times 10. Kiavina Beasara, when we were a smaller crowd and we were only 10 Talmidim, so then have a minaktin on the kolchad bechad meyameya. Everyone would carry 100. Again, 10 students, 100, 100 a pop, you're back to 1,000. The chol meya minaihu and all, all of the 100s, lo have a machsik, lo hutsana bas tilsa sabe. They, they could barely fit into the basket. These baskets that were three, they couldn't even hold on to everything. The fruits were, were overflowing. And Rabbi Yochanan, as we learned already in a previous Masech, was a balbasar, he was a big eater. That he was a bigger person. He would eat all of them. And he would say, I, I have gained no sustenance from this. So even if you want to tell me, fine, there's no mizonos on this. But it seemed to imply from our last answer that even though it wasn't Mayim and Melach, and even though it wasn't mizonos, but it did, it did have some benefit to it in regards to your eating. You should get some degree of zan, some degree of satiation. Yet, yet Rav Yochanan said it did nothing for him. So answers the Gemara, Ema Mizona. Really, uh, the answer is that there, there was some type of sustenance to it. It's just that he's just saying that it wasn't Mizona. So it wasn't uh, fulfilling. Amarahuna Amarav, Shvua Shalo Ochel Kikarzu. If a person points at a piece of bread and says, I'm not eating that, the halacha is still Ma'arvin Loba. You're still allowed to use that piece of bread as an Eruv. That is not problematic. Kikarzu Alai. What if you say about yourself, again, that more strict level, the language of Alai is talking about me. It's not about the loaf, it's about me. So kikarzu alai, then ein ma'arvin loba. Why not? Uh, look immediately to our right in Rashi, Vibur Hamas, called kikarzu alai, mashma kol davar hana'asa ka'asar alai. Uh, so we see a more of a formal isar hana here, which we would not have seen in regards to the previous case. So that's why when you say ochel kikarzu, that you're not going to eat a certain piece of bread, you can still be ma'ariv with that. That's not an isar hana. But once you establish upon yourself an isar hana, so then you can no longer use it as an We're at the first of the longest lines in Daf Lamed Amar Aleph, uh, and the Gemara is now going to ask a question on this shita of Rav Huna in the name of Rav. Let's see what it says. Meisi we have a tosefta. What does the tosefta say? We see that if a person makes a nether about a loaf of bread, that you are allowed to use an Eruv. Now here, the language doesn't match what it said before, where it said, It also doesn't say, So this Tosefta has more of an ambiguous language when it says, So it says the Gemara, Isn't this the stricter version, where there's an Isr Hana for your language of Alai on me? And therefore, what do we see? The Rav Huna doesn't have a, a have a have a foot to stand on. Says so Gemara, the Amar Zu, Lav Dafka. Just because it's ambiguous doesn't mean it's like the way you want it. It's not Plato. We got to be able to have it stem with the rest of the sources. Says the Gemara, no. What this source was talking about, where it's No Dermina Kikar, where you're allowed to make an Eruv, that's where he says Kikar Zo. That's the language of Zo here. We're talking about that piece of bread, but not not about the person himself. Hachanam and Mistabra. This also makes sense based on the continuation of that Tosefta. Uh, the Tosefta started here on, on the first of the longest lines, and the Gemara continues the Katani Seifa later in that Brisa. What does it say? A Masai, when is it true that you are Me'arev with that Kikar? Bizman Sha'amar Shua Shalo Atamena, when you make a Shua that you're not going to taste it. Aval Omar Alai Mai, had you said specifically about yourself what would be the Din? Achanami de Ein Me'arven Loba. So we see a beautiful, explicit reference to the fact that Hare Alai is a stronger language. And this source is not a question on the sheets of Rav Huna in the name of Rav. This Tosefta is not a problem. Says the Gemara, Yihachi, if that's true, Adetani Kikarzu, Hektesh, if a person would have said this Kikar, which is Hektesh, there we said Ein Me'arven Loba, why not? 
because the pisha ain me'arvin behekdeshos. So the, that's, a, that's the continuation of the Tosefta as well. So it says the Gemara, if there are all of these distinctions to be made, and we have a consistent line here, where when we say hare alai, it's usher, and when we say kikarzu, it's mutter, liflog belisne bidida, then you should have been explicit about it and made this distinction within the Tosefta that we were learning. What should you have said? Bamed varem amurim to amar zo. Aval amar alai, ein me'arvin lo ba. So this is uh, the full breadth of the question against, against Rav Huna, is that why didn't we make this distinction? So Amar Lach Rav Huna, Rav Huna would say, we didn't need to make this distinction. Elamai, what was the other option? Kol hecha da'amre alai ma'arvin. Was the other option to say that when it's, it was hare alai that you could make an erub? That doesn't work because kasha resha. Your question doesn't even make any sense. The resha explicitly says that you're not allowed to do that, that hare alai is usr. So why do we have to bother with liflog velisni bidida? Why do I have to make a distinction when the other option isn't even reasonable? So then says the Gemara, you're right. Chasurim mechzerah v'hachiktani. Whenever we say chasurim mechzerah, it usually means I'm correcting something and I'm clarifying something. It's usually one or both uh, of those things. So it says the Gemara, 12 lines or so from the bottom, chasurim mechzerah v'hachiktani. Here is what's going on. Wow, this is a, a chiddush already. That when when the when the Tosefta says it's no darmin hakikar, you're allowed to make an eruv, even if he took the more restricted way, even if he said hare alai, he would not be allowed to. Uh, he would still be allowed to make an eruv. Nasa, it's as if we make it keomer. It's as if he said shvur shalot amena. So mikol makom. Now we're back to where we started. Kasha the Huna. Because here we see that Hare Alai works in this Chasurim Mechzer version of the, of the Tosefta. It says the Gemara, no, Rav Huna has a Mari Makom with which to rely upon, who the Amar Karabi Eliezer. To Tanya, the Bryce writes, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer Shvua Shalo Ochal Kikarzo, Me'arven Loba, Kikarzo Alai, Ein Ma'arven Loba. So we see here that when you say Kikarzo Alai, Ein Ma'arven Loba, and that's going to be the Shita that Rav Huna, that Rav Huna relies upon. The Tosefta is going to be another Tana who says that Hare Alai is permissible. Rabbi Eliezer is the, is the predecessor to the Shita of Rav Huna, which says that it's not allowed, and now all the Shitas fit. Except for one problem, the Gemara doesn't understand the Shita of Rabbi Eliezer that we just learned. Rabbi Eliezer just taught us, and again, he's the support, he's the, uh, the primary source for the Shita of Rav Huna, but Umi Amar Rabbi Eliezer Hachi, did he really say that that would be allowed? Says the Gemara, Ve'atanya ze'aklal. Adam oser asma ve'ochel ma'arven loba. If a person makes something oser upon themselves, they are allowed to be ma'arev. Okay. Ochel anesar lo la'adam ein ma'arven alaba. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, kikarzo alai ma'arven loba. This line is exactly what we, what is our problem? Let's read it again. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Kikar Zo Alai, this exact same language as the previous Brisa. In the previous Brisa, when it said Kikar Zo Alai, Rabbi Eliezer said Ein Ma'arvin. Here it says Ma'arvin Loba. Let's just finish up the Brisa and then we'll, we'll get to our question. Kikar Zo Hektesh Ein Ma'arvin Loba, Bish Ein Ma'arvin Bekdesha. So now we have a real big problem because we have Rabbi Eliezer saying not ambiguous words, but the same exact words. Kikar Zo Alai. And in one case he said you can be Ma'arvin, in one case he says you cannot. So what's the Gemara's answer to such a direct black on white contradiction? Uh, a, a famous answer, a common construct of an answer, What are we talking about? We're talking about two Tanoim who are within the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. So Rabbi Eliezer had Talmidim, and his Talmidim did not know which one was correct. They thought one Talmud thought that the Rebbe said that it's permissible to, uh, to be Ma'are with the, with the stronger language of Isr Hana, of, her, of Kikar Zu Alai, and the other Tana, who was a Talmud of Rabbi Eliezer, felt the opposite. So we don't really know what Rabbi Eliezer held because we have two sources that are very clear with no ambiguity at all as to what he holds, and they say exact opposite things. That brings us to the two dots toward the bottom of the page, three lines from the bottom, Daf Lamed Amad Aleph. Let's continue. The Arvin the Nazir Beyain, as we learned, that even if a person is a Nazir, he's allowed to benefit from an Eruv that's made out of wine, even though a Nazir is not allowed to have any wine. It says the Gemara Masnis from Zolke Beishamai. Our Mishnah must not be in line with the Shita of Beis Shammai. Why not? Because the Tanya, the Brisa writes, Beis Shammai Omrim, very clearly, a Ma'arvin Lenazar B'yayin. If our Mishnah is saying Ma'arvin Lenazar B'yayin, and Beis Shammai says very clearly, a Ma'arvin Lenazar B'yayin, our Mishnah can't be like Beis Shammai. Uli Yisrael B'Truma, he also says that it can't be that a Yisrael could benefit from an Eruv that's Truma because he's not a Kohen. So how can the Yisrael benefit from this Eruv? He's not allowed, says Beis Shammai. 
Beis Hillel pushes back, and of course, we follow like Beis Hillel, and our Mishnah reflects Beis Hillel's opinion. Beis Hillel Omrim, last line, Ma'arvin, the Nazir Biyayin, Uli Israel Betruma. I totally disagree with you on both counts. A Nazir is allowed to benefit from an Eru from which there's wine. And remember the shear we learned yesterday is two Revi'ios of wine, which is the appropriate shear for an Eru when you use wine, uh, even if you're a Nazir, and Israel can use Truma. In fact, Beis Hillel has a great argument. Amr lehen Beis Hillel lebeis Shammai. Yatem odim, do you not agree with me? Turning to the top of Laman Omid Beis, do you not agree with me? Shema Arvin legadol biyom kipurim. Don't you agree that if there is a uh, if there is a gadol, if there's someone who is uh, Rashi points out, me shahaya gadol shehevi shtei sairos. He has two pubic hairs. Shechaya beinui beafal gav de lemachar lo chazile. Even though tomorrow he can't eat this food, hold vechazile lekatan sheinu bar onshen because. Um, a child is allowed to eat the food because he's eight, seven, six, seven years old, whatever he can eat, no problem. So then, then can you make an Eruv for, for for Yom Kippur? I want to go on a nice long walk on Yom Kippur. Can I put my Eruv 2,000 Amos out and just go? No one can eat on Yom Kippur. So that's what Beis, ha- Beis Hillel asks to Beis Shammai. Am Rulahen, Aval, you're correct. Aval is a very interesting word. It's not a, it does come up fairly frequently in Shas. Aval means yes. Um, but it's a little bit of a, again, an uncommon word. Aval, you're correct, Beis Hillel, that we are allowed to use an Eru for a Gadol on Yom Kippur, Afal P, that you're not allowed to eat on Yom Kippur. Aye, right, so says the Gemara, Amru Lahan, Beis Hillel goes in for the, they go in for the kill. Kishem Shema Arvin Lagadol, Biyom HaKippurin, Kach Ma'arvin Lanazar, Biyayin, Uli Yisrael, Betruma. So what's your problem? If you are allowed to use a, an Eruv on Yom Kippur, Afalpi, that no one's allowed to eat on Yom Kippur unless you're a Katan, so too by Truma, and so too by Nazir. So then the Gemara says back, fourth line, Lamed Abed Bezu, Beishamai, Hasam, what does Beishamai argue back? What are you talking about? You're comparing things that are not even on the same plane. Why not? Because Hasam, in regards to, to, the, to the food of Yom Kippur, here's the problem. Had it just not been Yom Kippur, I would have been fine. The food is shaykh to me in general. Just today, I have a limitation because it has, you know, we have to have Inui. We're not allowed to eat. However, hacha, in regards to, um, in regards to the case of a Nazir and Yayin, no matter what day of the week it is, a Nazir is never allowed to have the wine. So this is what's bothering uh, Beis Shammai and really is at the crux of the machlokas between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel, which is, do we say that a food that had it not been for today, I could eat it? It's, it's calendar, it's calendarically based. It's the 10th of Tishrei. I can't eat it, but had it been the 9th or 11th, I could have eaten it. That counts as an Eru. Uh, everyone agrees to that. But where the, where's the machlokas? It's by Nazirus. That, do we say that because theoretically other people can eat it, a non-Nazir or a Kohen could eat the Truma. Therefore, the Eruv counts for all the other people who would otherwise be forbidden. Yes or no, the Machlokas hovers right there. That's really what the, what the discussion is. And the Gemara is just highlighting here that our Mishnah is not like Beis Shammai. Kiman, six lines down. It's also the Loke Chananya. It's also not like the opinion of Chananya. What does he say? The Tanya, Chananya Omer, Kol Atzman Shel Beis Shammai, Lo Hayumodim Be'eruv, they would never, Beis Shammai would never have agreed to an Eruv, Ad Shiyosi Mitaso, Bechol Klei Tashmi Shol Hasham. You mamish have to get a moving truck, get your whole apartment emptied out, and put it where your Eruv is. Your Kenyan Shvisa, your Eruv has to be real, has to be authentic. It's not this facade of a couple of eggs and a matzah that, no, it has to be something that is appropriate as it relates to a place where you would be Kona Shvisa, where you would live. Kiman, who is that Shita like? I'm sorry, Kiman Azla Hadatanya, who does the following Brysa go like? Erev Bishchorim, if you were wearing a, a black suit or a black shirt while you were uh, making your Eruv, then Lo Yete Bilavanin, you shouldn't go out with white. Bilavan, if you were wearing white, lo yeti b'shorim, kiman, amar rev nachman, bar yitzchak, chanan yehi, v'aliba de b'shamay. All of this is a liba de b'shamay, because what did he say? He said that you need to bring the, the whole kitchen sink. Everything's got to come with you. So that, that's, un, that's a very high bar. It's certainly not how we pass him, because we rely on Erevin all the time. We don't see full wardrobes of people uh, who are using them. That's ridiculous. We just don't do that. Maybe it's not ridiculous, but we certainly don't do that. So says the Gemara, a very subtle a um, very subtle question that's being asked here. When you took out a black shirt that morning, I but you did, and then you wanted to ch- and you and you're not allowed to wear white. I fine, I understand. But why are you allowed to wear the black? I don't understand. 
the diuk would be that you could go out with the white. It's you can't go out with the black ones, but you can go out with a white shirt. Why? We said you need everything there. You need everything there. So there was just a, a, a little bit of space for a diuk there, and the Gemara took the opportunity, which is that if you're saying that you, you took out the Eruv in a white shirt, and you didn't have a black shirt with you, so you can only do the white but not the black. But why? Everything else has to be, should be out there to make your shvisa, your Kenyan shvisa real. Says the Gemara, you're right. Hachi kamar. Irev bilavenim vehutzrach l'shchorim, af bilavenim lo yatsa. If you needed to change shirts, if you needed that other shirt, you're taka right, that that would not work and you would not be allowed to wear the other shirt. Keman, who is this like? Amar of Nachman bar Yitzchak, chanan yehi v'aliba de shamai. All of this is, of course, the opinion of Hananya, who says we need to bring everything out to show that the Kenyan Shvisa is authentic. It's not symbolic. It is practical. Okay, let's continue. Almost halfway down on Lamed of Beis. Uh, we have about 15 more lines or so. Sumchus Omer Bechulen. If you recall back in our Mishnah, we saw that after we saw the Shita, which we now know aligns with Beis Hillel, that we are allowed to um, have wine for a Nazir as part of an Eruv, and we're allowed to have Trumo even for a Yisrael, for an Eruv. Sumchus argued and said, no, 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 that's not correct. It has to be chulen. A Yisrael cannot have truma for his Eruv. So it says the Gemara, What are you arguing on? Are you only arguing on the truma versus chulen component? Are you leaving alone the Nazir comment of our Tanakama? Was your rejection full or partial? So it says the Gemara, my taima. Why is it, at least why does it seem this way, that a Nazir is allowed to have an Eruv made of wine but Yisrael is not allowed to have an Erev made of Truma, says the Gemara, because the Nazir, the Efshar, the Mishal Anizirusa, he's able to get a Sheila Schacham and undo his Nazirus. That's always up to him. And because it's always up to him, there's really no restriction. Ah, oh, that's a very good answer, says the Gemara, Ihachi, but if that's true, Truma Nami, Efshar, the Mishal Ivave. But if that's true, then even though I dedicated something as truma, I can undo it. So why don't we just say you can undo it? Says the Gemara, because imis shalalah hadra latifla. Because what happens if you, if you decide to not give your truma? Well, you're back to what you started with, which is tevel. Well, you can't eat that either. So mimonavshach, that, that, that certainly wouldn't work. So says the Gemara, belifro shalah mimakom acher. Maybe we can say that we can do the hafrasha elsewhere. Let's say I have uh, a couple of baskets of fruit at home, and I have a lot more baskets here, right here with me right now by my Eruv. So I'll say, I'm going to undo my truma status, make this chulen, and I'm going to give my truma elsewhere so that what I have here is edible, so that it's not tevel. Yeah, it's another very practical way to do. Says the Gemara, nobody does that. Lo nechshidu chaverim lisrom shalom inamuka. A chaver, a person who has a higher level, a person who is uh, it's in between a balabas and a rav, so a person who's a chaver, so that chaver, um, here is the deal. He is, we assume about these people that they would not be torim shalomina mukaf. We assume that they would not give truma um, away from the mass of food that we have in front of us. And therefore, we're not concerned about the case scenario where I will, uh, you know, have my food here and I'll give the truma elsewhere so that all the food here is mutter to eat. The lifro shalom Why don't I just separate a little bit from it right now? I'll take away the truma from it right now. Okay, just set it aside. But the rest of it I could use for my Eruv, says the Gemara, Anu Kimta, Deles Be Shiura. There's not enough. All we have is Shtei Sudos. So if you take off your Truma, even if it's the tiniest amount, you just ruined your Shtei Sudos. Now you don't have an Eruv anymore. Says the Gemara, my Piska. You think that that's why Sumchus is, Sumchus is saying that you can't have Truma for Yisrael because of this wacko case where we only have exactly stay sudos, such that when you take away one stalk of a vegetable, the whole thing is bust? Come on, that can't be why. That can't be why Sumchus is giving such a kula. The reason why Sumchus holds what he holds in our Mishnah is because he holds like the Rabbanon de Amre. We're concerned about the fact of a gzera, of an iser der a shvus is an iser der that took place during ben hashmashos. Look immediately to our left, one line down. In Rashi, di bramaschol, gazer love ben hashmashos. Rashi writes, um, ke, ke, besha, ke beshavas atzma, they have bas truma shvushi. 
we're afraid that you may pick it up. It's not because it functionally wouldn't work for a Yisrael. That's not the problem. The problem is that it's muksa for a Yisrael, and therefore it's out of bounds. It's not that it's us or for him to eat. It's that it's muksa for him. Okay, so that's why he holds what he holds. It says the Gemara, Kiman Azla, two-thirds of the way down, coming almost to a close for tonight. Kiman Azla, uh, who does he? What, who does the following Mishnah hold like? Yeshe Amru Akolafi Mashu Adam. It really depends. Some of these amounts are very subjective. What are the amounts that are subjective? Here's what they are. When we do the kmitza and the base of Mikdash, the coin, he, he grabs flour and then he picks up his thumb and his pinky. Whatever is held in between his three fingers, well, what if you got a bad grip? More falls out. If you got a good grip, you're holding more. If you have big hands, you have small hands, you got stuff in between the fingers, stuff not, you get it's just such different sizes. As we know from from reading the Torahs in the mornings, that, uh, that the Kohen Gadol was Malol he'd take handfuls of the Torahs, and he, that's what he would do daily. So that's, uh, that's also depends on the size of your hands, bigger hands, smaller hands. Not only that, continues this Mishnah, we know that if a person drinks Malol Lugma of a liquid, uh, he's going to be chayiv. But, but what if your cheek's bigger than mine? So then you get to drink more than I do before the shear? That, that's crazy, right? We have a lot of flexibility. All right, last one. We also see that there's a degree of flexibility as it relates. Who is this like? Says the Gemara. Sumchas was of the opinion that whatever was the appropriate amount of food is what you would have given. Maybe we should say that there is a, a, descent, a, a dissenting opinion against Rav Shimon ben Elazar. How so? Um, what did we just say here? We said here, the amount depends on the person. What does Rav Shem ben Elazar hold? Rav Shem ben Elazar says, So this doesn't work because what does this price to say? This price to says, Rav Shem ben Elazar says, whatever they, whatever they need to eat. But for a Ravtan, we didn't give the amount that was relative to the Ravtan. For the Ravtan, we gave an average amount. But that's not the previous line. We just learned in the name of Sumchus that the amount for the Eru was relative to the person. Yet the sheet of Rav Shem ben Elazar is not relative to the person. He's a glutton. He can eat three times as much as this. Why did we even him out at a, at a midah benanis? Why did we give him this medium amount? So it says the Gemara, Tirgama achol v'zakein. Tirgama achol v'zakein. Aval ravtan, bat l'day tol etol kol adam. It's, we measured the appropriate amount when it came to the chol and to the zakein. There we say, it's my dechazile. Whatever they needed. The raftan, Hitaka does get a different status because he's not normal. There's something wrong with his eating habits. Because his eating habits are so abnormal, we do not give him the distinct measure of whatever he needs. We do even him out at a midah benunis. And therefore, there's no machlokas between Sochus and Rishim ben Elazar. We'll stop here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful night, everybody.